Thank you, Andreas, and good morning, everyone. There's a very real sense of excitement about this open meeting finally getting underway after many months of intensive preparation on the part of a wide range of people. As Andreas mentioned uh, at the outset, this is the seventh open meeting of the Human Dimensions of Global Environmental Change Research Community. This sequence of meetings started in 1995 with a relatively small and somewhat esoteric uh, meeting in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in the United States. And since then we have gone forward through Luxembourg in 1997, Shonan Village in Japan in 1999, Rio de Janeiro in 2001, <clears throat> Montreal, Canada in 2003, Bonn in 2005, uh, and now here we are again for the seventh meeting, again in Bonn, but uh, in addition in this wonderful facility of the UN campus, I feel it's a real privilege for us to be able to have this meeting uh, in such a splendid um, and wonderful venue. Uh, Andreas mentioned that we have um, almost 1,200 registrations, people from 80 or 90 countries uh, with us. The numbers, of course, in themselves are very impressive. But I want to say beyond that, <clears throat> that this represents a kind of maturation of the human dimensions of global environmental change uh, research community in several respects. Uh, one respect is what you might think of as globalization. Uh, this is not just a research community of the developed northern countries, but is now a global uh, enterprise. Uh, the fact that there are some 40% of the participants from the global south is, I think, a very dramatic and important and interesting uh, feature of this meeting. Uh, partly this, I think, is a reflection of the growing awareness that the issues of global environmental change are global, that their impacts will be global, that solutions must come on a global basis. And partly also, I would like to say, perhaps to brag just a little bit, uh, that the globalization of this community is in part a testimony to the efforts that the International Human Dimensions Program has made over these last years as we have worked very hard to bring into um, the community a broader and more diverse set of people. So uh, the proof, I think, is here with us and I'm delighted to, to be able to witness it. Uh, I think it's also the case that over these years since 1995, uh, maturation has occurred uh, in the global human dimensions community in the sense that we now feel that this is not in some conventional way just a kind of an academic exercise where a small number of people from universities get together once in a while and exchange thoughts on topics that are often hard to understand on the part of the general public. Uh, the human dimensions community has become a real kind of public uh, entity, a public uh, uh, system, if you like, uh, in which there is a lot of engagement uh, with the public, with particularly the policy community. Uh, I know there are quite a lot of people here from the policy community I'm delighted by the presence in significant numbers of our sponsors from BMBF, for example, but others as well, a number of people from the press. I think we are in a new day, in a sense. There is a feeling on the part of many of us that uh, the human dimensions, the behavior of human beings, is now recognized to be at the absolute heart of the global environmental change agenda, that the issues that we are concerned with are in very large part the results of human behavior, that the impacts that we're most concerned about will be on social welfare, 
and the most important perhaps that the response is, if we are to address questions like climate change, will have to come through the actions of human beings and through the uh, development of change in the behavior of human beings. So this, I think, is a kind of exciting setting. Let me now just take you through uh, a couple of points about the program. Uh, I'll do this uh, very quickly. We've tried to design the program, and you'll see this when you look at the uh, program book. We've tried to design the program so it's not just an academic exercise, but an opportunity for members of this Human Dimensions research community to come together to inform each other about what we've been doing in the last three years and to talk to each other about what we plan to be doing uh, in the next several years. Um, so hopefully you'll have the sense that this is not just a kind of standard run-of-the-mill uh, academic conference. Andreas mentioned, but I draw to your attention again, that we've deliberately created an overall theme for this meeting. Uh, the theme is the uh, social challenges of global change. In order to frame the issues in a way uh, that will be understandable and that will generate enthusiasm from the social sciences. Uh, Professor Maya Kramer mentioned that we need the integration, the linkage between the social sciences and the natural sciences, and that is, of course, true. Naturally, that's the case. But on the other hand, we as the social science community need to frame the issues in ways that are not only intelligible, but attractive and appealing to the social science community. So we have, as Andreas mentioned, drawn in thematic issues day by day for demographics, the population dimensions that are obviously so relevant to global environmental change, but which most of you will know we've often found hard to deal with. How do we address the population uh, questions? Uh, and the same is true with respect to ecosystem services, the theme of tomorrow, where we've now developed a lot of expertise through things like the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment about the nature of ecosystem services from a biophysical point of view, but we know that there's a lot of work to be done from the social science point of view about how do we value ecosystem services, why does the value of ecosystem services often get left out of the calculus of benefits and costs, how might we structure uh, collective decision making in such a way as to place greater attention on ecosystem services, even though they sometimes fall through the cracks when we're making calculations of benefits and costs. Uh, and the third day, of course, very strongly on the themes of equity. I was very struck last month at the Climate Congress in Copenhagen, which some of you probably were at, at the very strong focus that was developing on a variety of questions of equity and fairness. Now, this was, I think, a tremendous development in the community, and it's one that we should carry forth in this community as well. Uh, and of course, on Thursday, uh, institutions which uh, we all know are important, uh, certainly from the point of view of how do we address the global change agenda. So we have each day one of these themes, but at the same time I warn you to look closely at your agenda book because some of the parallel sessions of each day are not limited to the theme of that particular day. So be, do, look very closely. Uh, one or two other things about the program. Um, <clears throat> we have scheduled a session on new projects. And this, we hope, will be interesting to a fair number of people to get a sense of how IHDP science projects are born. What's the gestation process? Uh, labor is very often more than nine months, friends, for a major human dimensions of global change project. And that's a fascinating uh, process. Uh, that will take place uh, on Tuesday, I think, but you can look.